Okay, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Kevin Bargness and I am with the Department of Planning and Development. Please be advised that this meeting is being recorded and live streamed to the YouTube page of the Department of Planning and Developments. Uh, if you're a member of a development team who's presenting today and you're not already a panelist here in this Zoom session, uh, please raise your hand and I will make you a panelist. Uh, with that, I'll turn it over to Josh's son to get us started. Josh. Good afternoon. I'm Josh Sun with the Department of Planning and Development. Welcome to the second meeting of the Committee on Design. To our esteemed committee, thank you again for volunteering your time to be part of this advisory group. For the members of the public who are joining us, what you will see today and at future Committee on Design meetings are projects currently under review by DPD staff. The committee is a voluntary advisory body of design professionals that provide their expertise on design issues. The committee is not a substitute for plan commission as it is not a forum for public debate, nor is the advice of the committee legally binding. It is the hope that today's discourse will lead to recommendations that will elevate the design excellence of the city of Chicago. These recommendations will be forwarded to DPD staff for consideration as they review these projects for plan commission and, sub and subsequent approvals. With that said, I will continue on to roll call. Please state present or here if you are in attendance. Sarah Beardsley. Present. Bob Faust. Present. Anna Ishikawa. Present. Reed Proloff. Here. Brian Lee. Here. Renald Mitchell. Present. Juan Moreno. Here. Hola Reyes. Present. John Rohan. Here. Leslie Roth. Here. Ann Thompson. Here. And the Astra Gates is excused. All right. Thank you. So that concludes roll call. <laughs> members of the public, you are welcome to begin dropping comments and questions into the Q&A box. Committee members are invited to review this information during and after each presentation and incorporate the comments into the discussion. We will not be reviewing questions or comments from the public individually. To the applicant team, please clearly state your name and your relation to the project prior to speaking. You have 20 minutes to present your proposal. Committee members, please hold your comments and questions until after each presentation. We will now move to the first item on the agenda. 3100. Uh, to 3150 South Kedzie Avenue, located in the 22nd Ward, <clears throat> the applicant proposes a mixed-use development to be called Focal Point Community Campus on approximately 30 acres of land at the southwest corner of West 31st Street and South Kedzie Avenue in the Little Village neighborhood. Focal Point will deliver a new 151-bed St. Anthony Hospital, an outpatient medical office building, a surgical center, daycare, retail, wellness, education, arts, housing, recreation, and other services designed to be a resource for those living on the southwest side of Chicago. All components on the nearly 1 million square foot campus have been guided by research and community engagement over several years and are focused on providing opportunities and addressing the social determinants of health. Uh, please proceed with the presentation. Okay, uh, my name is uh, Guy Medallia and I'm president and CEO of Chicago Southwest Development Corp. I am also president and CEO of St. Anthony Hospital. Uh, let me begin by um, uh, pointing out that this project started uh, approximately 10 years ago. Uh, the, the whole purpose of creating this, this concept was to relocate um, St. Anthony Hospital, which is currently 125 years old um, from a uh, the building that most likely has another five years of life into it, into a um, new, highly innovative uh, healthcare facility for the community that we serve. Um, the, the project um, over the last 10 years um, really evolved uh, as research um, continued uh, within the community and outside uh, organizations. It started out with 11 acres and now it has evolved to a 30 acre facility. Pr 
primarily through this research, uh, community meetings, um, outside facilitators uh, into the community, helping us to define what the community actually wanted in the way of a mixed use project. Uh, the reason why uh, a mixed use project was vital to this, um, uh, this relocation for St. Anthony Hospital is because St. Anthony Hospital cares for a underserved community. Um, primarily, approximately 80% of our patients are managed care with 20% uh, being um, self-funded or unfunded patients. And so uh, we needed uh, to create a mixed use process to be able to um, keep this hospital um, funding the same community that it has for the last 125 years. Um, we, we spent time out in the community, uh, even up until last year, meeting with community members uh, local residents, uh, again, trying to get a sense, strong sense of what they would use in the way of uh, a facility on 31st and Kedzie. And what you're about to see is the result of um, many meetings over the years uh, with the community. So uh, with that, uh, I'd like to turn it over to uh, uh, Tom Tremble. Hi, everybody. Good afternoon. We're excited to get the opportunity to to, uh, to share all the work that we've done over the years, um, as Guy mentioned. Uh, real quick, uh, like a starter point for some of the technical parts. Everything that we've done over the last couple of years has been uh, guided by the planning design guidelines, those neighborhood design guidelines of the city of Chicago. But we've also worked with Little Village with their industrial corridor modernization plan, and then also the quality of life plan that they put together in 2013. Um, and the plans and everything that you'll see reflect that. Um, just to give you an idea of kind of, and I'm sure you're already there, but it's like the, the focal point of focal point is 31st in Kedzie. Um, the surrounding elements around there, Cook County Department of Corrections is nearby. Uh, La, La Bavita Park is uh, also there in the, in the corridor as well as it is uh, um, set up so that it's just north of the interstate there. We have an active rail line that is the Canadian National uh, Rail that is there, but they have a spur, that orange or the yellow line that has been decommissioned. And then we also have the Burlington Northern Santa Fe um, opportunity that is being considered for trail uh, as well. And all of those have been something that we have considered to uh, consider in our site integration is the way that it ties back into those, those systems and understanding the boundaries that we have. Uh, the other one too is around the site itself that has a number of, uh, primarily it's zoned for light industrial and industrial. Uh, we have a number of local businesses with JLG scrap, a lot of automotive with both Rivera um, Auto Repair and also like Frank's, uh, Frank's Auto and a number of uh, 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 check cashing uh, locations. And then probably the most uh, significant retail that's nearby is an, Al an Aldi that is just right there in image seven and six is just up the street from the north of our site. Uh, contextually, again, like I said, uh, Interstate 55 is down to the south. You cross over the canal with the bridge and then of course the Kedzie uh, rail bridge uh, coming onto the site. And since we couldn't do this in person with any models or anything, the, the team kind of put together a couple of quick little flybys here. So, this is coming up, uh, shows you the 30, 32nd and Kedzie entry, 31st and Kedzie uh, uh, intersection, and then 31st and Spalding entry point. These will be the main entry elements for the, the site as, as the development goes forward and the design is based around that. Um, an interesting thing about this site is it actually has a fantastic relationship with the, a large area of residential to the Northwest. Um, to the west, we are bordered by a primarily industrial area that is a storage currently for uh, the opportunity for uh, uh, promote production equipment for, uh, for movies and cinema in the city of Chicago. And then to the south, we are, um, we're pretty much, uh, we back right up to uh, the rail abutment that actually rises up and actually creates the real, only real topo that is in the area uh, to allow for the rail to go over uh, Kedzie Street. Um, the site itself is, like Guy said, we are now at about 30 acres. It's relatively square with um, just a little bit longer, uh, a little bit longer to the north-south dimension than it is to the east-west dimension. 
we have organized the, the site so that it uses the, we projected the city streets into the main entry points on both the east and the, the north side of the site. Um, it has been set up primarily as an opportunity for, uh, like uh, we just went through in the entry, that its program is pretty diverse in the fact that it has a significant amount of, of health and wellness, but also education, but also introduces retail and uh, parks and recreational elements. This is a quick dolly shot that's going from 31st Street and is actually moving to the south. You can see St. Anthony's Hospital, which we talked about the idea of the market and the solar uh, canopy, the plaza. Hospitality is located in the bridge across. The office, uh, we have office and accelerators and incubators for the local community uh, retail. Education becomes important because this is the site of the previous uh, Wab uh, Wab Wabash um, Walburn Trade School that was located here originally. And then we have the um, uh, retail here at the end with a little bit of surface parking. Going around the corner here, and I'll just walk you through it as, as we go counter, as we're going clockwise, you can see that we have housing and daycare located up here in the, in the Northwest corner. Of course, St. Anthony's Hospital anchors the North. The market is located, the marketplace uh, is located on the entry point there at 31st and Kedzie. That accelerator and incubator sits and helps frame out this main entry point to the middle of the site. And then surface parking along with an anchor retail tenant that would be both uh, dry goods and uh, grocery, uh, most likely. The interesting part about this site, too, is the fact that due to the fact that the medical component will have a central utility plant. And that's one of the reasons it is discussed as a campus. Um, a campus is in addition to just uh, talking about it being a mixed use uh, development. It has an opportunity where we have worked with the CDOT to introduce the idea of signals at the three main entry points that allow for safe pedestrian exchanges as long as vehicular. But it also has a number of existing uh, bus stops that allow for people easy access there. And then one of the things we've done with the city uh, is a much more integrated component of bringing a trail system in that allows for entry points to the north and then exiting to the south that could offer an opportunity for a mile and a half, uh, mile and a half uh, walkway if we were able to tie into uh, existing systems. The circuit is, uh, is set up to allow for vehicular uh, access at these points as well. Unique to this site primarily is the idea of ambulances having to come to the hospital and we've done to make sure that they don't have to penetrate deeply into the site by locating them uh, coming off 31st Street and making sure that they stop right there with the hospital to the north. Uh, we also have a significant amount of bus traffic that'll happen with daycare that enters there along with the service roads because we know that those two will work uh, in tandem with each other. And then the vehicular drop off for the opportunity for both ride share and then also uh, self park is integrated as well into the, using the, the grid as our basic, uh, basic organizing system. And then it allows for uh, drop-off points there for uh, the hospital and ED drop-off. The other one that we're working on in the green line represents the opportunity for shuttles that would work with both the orange and the pink line to allow people to shuttle to the location um, once they're able to get to a train stop. Um, we have worked to make sure that, uh, you know, we put the buildings, buildings towards the street to make a nice pedestrian environment. We've used the buildings uh, as best we can to screen the parking, uh, significant parking requirement that we have, and then located the service areas so that they share kind of the same kind of environment as our uh, neighbors to the, to the west with the industrial element. But what we've also been really proud about in the, in the evolution of the project is about 58% of the site is open uh, with green and open public spaces and the opportunity for uh, engagement. The other we've seen there is we have play spaces, we have an amphitheater for uh, pro for outdoor programming. We've talked about the idea of engagement with artists and graphic designers and the opportunity to define uh, trails and gateways on the site themselves. We've used both uh, extensive and intensive green roofs allowing for uh, uh, gardening for the hospital and for the community, but also helping to reduce the heat island effect. And the Biggest and central part of focal point always had been with the original and now is the idea of the athletic fields that are there. And they now occupy the roof of the parking facility, which offers the ability for two full scale soccer pitches and a baseball field that are open to the public and will be tied with the uh, 
recreational component, but also the educational elements. We did these really quick uh, section cuts because you can understand that the build in, in the development itself, that there's a lot of stacking going on. This section itself goes from north to south. Uh, it cuts right through the middle and goes right through the main bridge that connects the parking facility and the outpatient center back to the hospital. But what we tried to do is instead of just having a pedestrian uh, connector that just goes across and is a single like hamster tube for lack of a better term, is that it's a, um, and a suspended uh, hospitality element with the both onstage and offstage bridges that allow for public access from either side during the winter or the idea that we also have private, uh, uh, more uh, offstage corridor, if you'd like to say, that would allow us patients and staff to be able to move along without actually having to mix into the public corridor. This is actually going to flip to the other side. You can see the bridge and now we're looking back to the west or to the east, excuse me. And you can see that, um, that public amphitheater and you can also see the uh, uh, multi-purpose courts that are uh, set up in kind of a health festival right now. But also the idea that this uh, integration with the public, the idea of the swimming pool being on grade so the kids can access that in the summertime, that having direct views from both the athletic fields and below into the fitness or uh, basketball courts and track and then we stack on top of that the outpatient center that offers views onto the campus, but also these areas of uh, activity and, and recreation. This section cuts from the east to the west. So coming from the backside where you see loading is the west side of the site. And then the two retail elements are over there on the east next to Kedzie. Um, you can see that we have three levels of parking there. We have retail on the first floor. And then this long building will represent that element of both secondary and uh, vo uh, vocational uh, education uh, returning to the site and being located there with access to, to parking in the lower level plazas. Long story short, a lot of time and energy has been put into it. Uh, you know, significant, uh, you know, performance have been evaluated and stuff to put the programming together. But the big thing is, is just for this short presentation is we're uh, tracking at about 2.3 uh, million gross square feet we're parking about a thousand cars, about seven hundred, about one hundred and seventy-five bikes, and currently we're on track to match the living building challenges. Our um, as our grade towards uh, meeting sustainability requirements for the city. So, we've been uh, working directly with the city since May, and some of the major adjustments that we did in our intake meeting and some of the comments from the commissioner, where he wanted the site to be a little bit more open. As you can see, the original one back in May. Uh, we had a much more, the building set to the perimeter. What we've done in, now is we've actually, with that, had the opportunity to move the housing uh, back to the western side of the site, uh, insert the daycare underneath that that opens it up so that people have a better view from 31st Street and then also Kedzie down that main plaza. We have been able to reduce the parking significantly. We've been able to uh, actually reduce the uh, not only the parking garage and the size of that that has allowed us for more integration of the trail, but it's also allowed us a significant reduction in the um, on-grade parking, which has always been something we were trying to uh, manage as best we could to work with retail, but also help um, make sure that we make a nice pedestrian environment. I'm gonna walk you through just really quickly to give you a sense of it, and then we can open these, uh, get it open so we can get some of your critique that we're looking forward to, to hearing from you all on. Um, we're going to do these where you can see here, number one is our entry point from 32nd and Kedzie. So that's our most, our primary Eastern uh, signaled entry point. Uh, image two is the Northwest Market and the shade structure that is located at the intersection of 31st and Kedzie. Uh, the East Plaza is just south of that and actually offers a view completely through the development from East to West and has the um, ride share drop off located there. Number four is an image of that the public would see coming from the residential neighborhoods to the Northwest. So I'm gonna play a couple of real quick images here so you can just get a sense of this. This is walking across the street at 31st and Kedzie. When you do see these fractal images of, of gray and white or the green, um, these are opportunities that we're looking for engagements with graphic designers or artists directly uh, in early phases of the architecture to actually incorporate them into the buildings. And the idea of the gateways that take place in the community are significant in the way that we have gone through and created these portals across the campus. 
these quick four images here give you number one and gives you an image of what it would look like looking out the residential uh, components down onto the green space and also that those uh, multi-purpose ports. Um, you see again that portal that happens between the incubator and accelerator that we just saw in the last video. Number three offers you the cross that takes place right as you enter what we're calling the grand stair and the main social space between the two educational components on the upper levels with retail below and screening the parking garage. And then four is an actual entry point from 32nd Street looking up the retail corridor there. So if you drove in on that uh, corridor on 32nd Street and turned to the north, this would be the main, uh, this is the main interior road driving up towards St. Anthony Hospital. You can see that open plaza where the ride share is off to the right. We have the possibility of food trucks right there, cafe and coffee to the left. And then this is the main drop off that we spoke of where both the uh, lobby and an emergency department uh, will be located. We've tucked it up underneath the building, allowing for the larger part of the hospital to create the canopy, but also making sure that this is the larger, largest interior queue of automobiles inside the site. And they've been able to be kind of tucked away from the public spaces. This is a quick one that'll actually run you right up the axes from Kedzie Street that goes up this main public space, again, with the idea of an integrated artist portal that steps up, offers the opportunity to enter from the parking garage, but also makes the social space between the two, uh, the two education components, but also leads up to this, the grand gesture of the two, uh, the two football fields and baseball. And we'll finish up really quickly. This is the, the last one here is like uh, image one, is coming across to the intersection of 31st and Spalding as you enter into the site on the north and how you would navigate the, the trail system that goes through. And again, the green fractal pattern is the idea that we would engage with, a, with an artisan or graphic designer to create, uh, to create that envi a unique environment. Um, four it looks down to the south along that main retail and educational uh, axes. And then the final, excuse me, that was three. Number four actually is looking back towards the entry point of the site on the south as you would depart to the development to the east. And I'll play this really quick for you. So coming across, you can see the housing with the daycare on the lower level went past the pool. This is the multi, uh, multi-purpose courts with St. Anthony's there in the background. Turning down the retail corridor with the accelerator off to the left and the retail to the right. Looking back at that 32nd Street entry point, a quick glimpse at the social space grand stair. And then this is the trail as it continues to walk along the uh, area of retail here that would go off to the north, turning the corner, walking down along the surface parking, and then the opportunity to engage either uh, the raised trail system for the decommissioned line or cross over to future development into that link that would create that 1.5 mile loop that would circle back to La Vita Park. That was really, I know this is super fast. It's a big project, 20 minutes, try to keep it at 20 minutes, but I wanted to share this image with you just to kind of close. This is an image of the original, original submission for the uh, competition. The intention of, of some of the architectural treatments that you're not necessarily seeing as we are going through the development, but. I believe that right now in working with the city and working with our partners at Chicago Southwest Development Corp, that we are on, uh, you know, on target to create a really fantastic environment that will be transformational in the way that health and wellness is integrated into the mixed use developments. Um, and it's one where we look forward today with this critique to get some great uh, uh, input from you. Specific, a lot of them, they, we would hope the integration of art and art and graphic into the building, but also general comments on the architecture. And uh, thanks again for your time, everybody. And at this point, I'd uh, like to open it up to general comments and critique. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. That was great. Um, perfectly on time. Uh, so committee members, usually at this moment, uh, we I would say, um, please review any comments received from the public in the Q&A box, but it doesn't appear that we have any. Um, but uh, with that said, the floor is now yours for comments and questions to the applicant. So feel free to use the hand um, raise uh, icon or feel free to start speaking. Josh, where is the hand raise icon? 
It should be located at the bottom middle of your screen. I don't seem to have that. So just out uh, of curiosity, but if you, it's okay. Yeah, you're fine. <laughs> yep. I'll just, when I'm, after I hear everything I need to know from Ann Thompson, I'll just copy what she says and then. <laughs> <laughs> you're always copying me. I know, I know. I don't know why you let me follow you around like that. It's, it's, it's been so it's embarrassing. Um, yeah, yeah I'll, Reed, I'll you actually start. beat me to the punch. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do have one question, I'll actually. Oh. No, go ahead, Ann. <laughs> oh, I, I have one question. Um, first of all, I, I, this is a really uh, exciting project, and I congratulate on an aggressive program, and I appreciate the time and effort that has gone into developing this scheme. I'm wondering if you have, uh, if your intention is to execute in a single phase or if you'll be, or are you planning to phase the development um, across the site? And if so, could you talk about your thoughts around that? Sure, I, actually, this is Guy literally Medallia. was my first question. <laughs> <laughs> so th this is Guy Medallia. Um, uh, actually, it will be phased in. So um, the, the phase one will consist of the hospital, the, um, the building adjacent, which is part of the parking garage, which is, is gonna be needed. But as part of the parking garage, uh, you also have to include in there the medical office building, the um, what I call uh, the field house on steroids. Um, that would all you know, be part of it. Oh, this is very helpful, thank you. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I mean, if you can see that, that just as Guy explained, there's the, the intention there is that the primary the medical and the marketplace and then the parking garage would go and then the other uh, smaller components of the housing, uh, the incubator and the office space and then those two uh, smaller retail components would all come uh, at uh, in phase, that would be phase three and then phase two introduces the education component and then the surface parking there at the south, uh, the southeast corner. Tom, why Explaining that, would you also toss in how you're planning on dealing with the landscaping um, components of that in, in the phase phasing strategy? Well, I mean, the, the intention is that that uh, read the intention is that that long that uh, the linear park that takes place from basically with the housing at the far end all the way to the east would be uh, completed uh, during that phase. Then you also need to take the um, axial. Let's see if I can. I, can, I believe I can just, uh, let me do this real quick so you can see it. So this phase right here is gonna, that, all that, that landscaping has to come in phase one and then everything that comes here would have to be done as well as the access points into it. So all of that, the tree line, the grate, all of that is part of the first phase. So we'd have a primary uh, infrastructure in place uh, prior. The other one, though, is I think that your um, our hope is, as you all know, it's like uh, hospital uh, construction takes a lot longer than uh, retail, uh, retail, and also that. So it's possible that while the hospital is still under construction, we could be started with phase two and having the core and shell for education and the other components and get that liner building in as as well as part of that. Uh, the pad sites become a little bit more, uh, you know, those become more. Uh, one where a little more flexible. So, um, I think uh, I had Hannah and then uh, Ronald. I'm just going off the your sure. height of, of where you guys are on my my baby bunch thing here. Sure. My question was also about phasing of the landscape as well. But at the same time, how far would you say you are with the landscape design of the project? Are you pretty far? Like, are you at fifty percent? Is this pretty final? Can, uh, no, we're still in uh, schematic conceptualization at this point. So it is one where the, what we're presenting to you today is primarily the, the, the main master plan. So I think that there's lots of opportunities for uh, a comment at, the, at this point, if you'd like to. And do you have a landscape designer that is in part of this project or are you trying to do it all in-house? Right now it's being uh, where the primary engagement is currently in-house, but I think that the one thing that, as I can tell you, that we've planned on here is that this will have lots of opportunities for us to engage with, uh, with other um, groups. Not only, like I said, we talked about the idea of the artists and the graphic designers, but I do believe that there are opportunities for engagement with uh, the landscape, uh, the landscape uh, community in Chicago as well. 
you know, let, let me just jump in. One of the things about this project, and I, I'm not going to tell you it's, it's the sole reason why it took this long. There's many other reasons. But um, getting input from the community that it serves is, has been a very critical point. Um, and, and, I'll, and I'll tell you why. If you want something to be sustainable, if you want it to last, um, you need to get the input from the people that are going to use it. You know, that's really important. Over the years in my career, I've seen too many times where either my clients or, um, you know, my competition in the retail business, you know, would open up uh, um, a new location and get no input at all from the people using it. And they just didn't last long. And so um, getting people's input is going to be, you know, critical in terms of, you know, the type of landscaping, actually not just even about the landscaping. I mean, uh, we, we've got more meetings set up in terms of, you know, exterior look and feel. And just like Tom said about the graphic design is gonna be important. We service, um, we, we service a Latino, at St. Anthony Hospital I'm speaking of, and, and actually all the research work was based on the communities like um, Little Village, Back of the Yards, uh, North Lawndale, um, you know, so we, we and actually now uh, St. Anthony Hospital is servicing a good portion of uh, Chinatown. So um, we, we like to include feedback from, from everybody. I mean, we just think that that's going to be the success of it going forward. Absolutely. And I think everyone on this panel is familiar with that and has worked on very many community-based projects I guess my response was into the very axial kind of, you know, it, I, as a landscape architecture um, in the field, I can very much tell that this was done by architects. And I think, you know, it does need a more outward facing landscape architecture component where it really draws in that neighborhood component from, right. you know, the Northeast and of course the Northwest a little bit as well. But it currently seems like there's a service drive and then a drop off and that is your front door to the property for the community who might be walking to this neighborhood or development. And so I would strongly urge you to look into that. Yes, you're absolutely right. Um, I had it, so I was going trying to caught everybody here. So Renald, why don't you go? And then I've got Ms. Rez and then uh, Sarah and then back to you, Anne. I think is the way I had it down there as your hands came up. All right. So, sounds like a plan. And, and Tom, thanks so much. And just echoing Ann's um, comments, you know, congratulations on, on, you know, the effort to date, you know, again, it's a Herculean, you know, effort and, and a project of significant scale um, and significance. So um, your efforts are applauded. Um, I've got a couple of questions. Um, so starting off with the practical um, and, and Guy, this might be better aimed towards you. Um, what kind, what are your throughputs look like um, for your ED? Um, you know, I'm just, I'm wondering, you know, in my mind in terms of wayfinding and traffic flow, you know, for your ED drop-off, you know, it being more internal, you know, to, to your um, campus plan, you know, how that reconciles with the amount of um, your vehicle or traffic that might generate. Yeah. So one of the things that we did very early on uh, in some of the initial designs that still tie into this is get input from, um, you know, the... Uh, the, the men and women that actually come to St. Anthony Hospital right now and uh, drop off patients. So, you know, we went to the various districts, you know, um, fire departments and spoke with everybody, presented the, the layout and said, you know, what do you see as, you know, the best ingress and egress for, you know, patient drop off and how would it look, how would it be designed? And actually that was a very important important piece. Um, I, honestly, I'm not a healthcare person per se. I kind of thought that that was standard to do that. And actually we found out that, um, yeah, that doesn't always happen, you know, with remodels or even recently a couple of new hospitals that were put up. But um, the, the input that we have right now, the design that we have came from input from, uh, from actually paramedics that, you know, have been servicing our current hospital. All right, and I guess follow up to that, has this plan in, in any iteration been pressure tested through through traffic analysis? Uh, Joe Caprilli, where are you at? 
I'm right here. Thank Mike. you. Yep. Either or. Hey, Mike. Um, yes, we have. We've engaged a uh, traffic consultant, Kimberly Horn, is working with us. Mm -hmm. They have put together all the counts on the street, and we've actually had two meetings with CDOT to review the traffic counts and refine our plan. So we have started that and the process is well underway. All right, no, thanks, Joe. And then second you know, question, I mentioned I had a couple, and this is kind of trying to reconcile the department's you know, comments, initial comments with the plan. Um, it, it looks like notwithstanding what, what clearly is a, an intentional effort to try to create view portals and, and, and kind of you know, openness you know, throughout the campus, but it's still functioning essentially as a super block. And, and one of the department's comments was about, you know, seemingly my interpretation of it, I could be wrong, maybe the department wants to weigh in on this, was perhaps resisting that temptation and, and instead allowing for some arterials to, to connect east, west, you know, and north and south, you know, through the um, site. I, I guess I wonder, or I, I'm asking what were your reactions or your interpretations of that comment and, and if, if there's kind of a planning base, your basis for not, you know, kind of completely following through on that. So interested in hearing I, your thoughts. Yeah, actually, I could take that. So it, it wasn't. Uh, um, so when I first saw, you know, the, the concept of streets going through, um, you know, the, the project per se, you know, a lot of questions, you know, were generated uh, a lot. Um, I mean, to, just to mention a few you know, who maintains the streets? Uh, where do the streets go? Are they dead end? Actually, some of them were dead ends. Um, you know, we, we actually got input from um, DOT, you know, in terms of their thoughts, because again, you know, like, like this project began and hopefully we'll, we'll end this way, you know, getting feedback from other people. And, you know, it, it, didn't, it didn't have a uh, a positive embrace by throwing streets in there. Um, the, the other issue is the fact that what came across in all of our meetings with the community was a campus concept. And, you know, uh, one of the things that the city did throw out was the Passaic Trail, which we thought, you know, actually was very good for the project because actually it solidifies the campus model by, you know, connecting the Passaic Trail, you know, with people you know, on the campus. So, um, you know, it's, um, I, I, I did get worried about streets going, you know, through the project. I, I, and my concerns were, and, and, and maybe I overreacted, but safety, you know, was an issue. Uh, I was very much concerned about that. Um, but uh, we, we did, you know, with the help of HDR, we were able to align the streets, you know, um, like Spalding and, you know, getting in from Kedzie. And, you know, we really tried to make the recommendation still work um, without dividing the campus up and having have people cross streets. And, and it took up space. I mean, I, I will tell you, uh, honestly, I, I could have used, based on the survey data, another 10 acres, easily, easily. And so when you start throwing streets in, you take away from something's going to go. You know, it's, we're not going to be able to keep every, everything there because streets do take up space. So I, I hope I answered that. No, no, you did. Thank you. Appreciate it. Ronald, is that the end of yours? And then I, because oh, I, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry about that, Tom. Oh, no, yeah, no I'm problem. Done. I'm yeah. just trying. To, <laughs> you guys have all got your hands up now. So I'm doing my best. Yeah, I, I took, I thought I took my hand down. So yeah, <laughs> okay. I'm good. Well, yeah. Sarah, go, uh, Sarah, I had you, I had you next on there if you want to go ahead. Okay, thank you. Um, I did have a question about the trail that runs through the site. I understand it's a very nice, um, you know, addition to the master plan to try to bring the public into the site and bring bikes and bring joggers. But um, the actual layout of the trail to me with the 290 degree turns is not very fluid. And I would be concerned about congestion, especially in a hospital uh, type of environment. And I was wondering what the team has done to, to think about that as I look at the perspective of perhaps a biker or a fitness jogger, and even looking at the 606 and how that has become so popular in the future. If this were to become popular, 
um, how would the congestion be handled? I can, I mean, on that one, I can, I can tell you that, like I said, it's, it's very in early conceptual stages. I don't think that um, other than the fact that we are mapping out where it was going and the idea that it's there, I agree that the opportunity for a little bit more sensuous uh, uh, curl through there would be, would be worthwhile. I, we did want to make sure that with, with like this location right here on the, um, right here at the front of this with the swimming pool and the rec center entries and all of that, we did want to make sure that there was the opportunity for the bike trail to come in and be able to tie in there, the ability for bike parking to be nearby so that you could actually engage through that. So it, in, in one of those situations, I think you're probably right that this little, this little knuckle right here really needs to be looked at in the way that uh, it works for the, for at least for the exit. We'd also talked about the possibilities of actually extending the trail down and the possibility of using this, in the future down here, but all of that is still yet to be developed. I don't, I think like that is one where that's a really good comment and one that we can uh, develop at this time. I don't think that there's anything that would stop us from doing that. Have you thought okay. of an internal loop? Yeah, there's a possible, that's a great, that's another possibility. The, I think the intention, the one that we had considered, and again, you know, is the idea that internally, and this is about um, was the internal the idea of that being an internal uh, internal element in itself that could actually um, tie into the tie into basically being able to do like your Fitbit and getting your your ten thousand steps when you walked out and were able to do that. Or there were conversations that you can imagine that the other thing that was quite nice about this is that with the staircases that are option that are here to go up onto the um, element, we have the opportunity from a fitness standpoint to actually introduce some significant elevation to help with that kind of like, you know, like the Santa Monica stairs and, and some other places have been used for that opportunity on a pretty flat site. So I think that those are ones where I don't think we've uh, developed it to the point where we couldn't incorporate that, uh, that bit of criticism easily. Lovely. I shouldn't even say critique, not criticism. Um, that's one where, Sarah, did you have have more? Uh, no, that's it. Thank you. Okay. Um, I guess the next on the on the list there, Anne. I had you down again. Oh, sorry. Uh, since I went once, if somebody else wants to go next, Sarah, I just raise my hand. Are you sure? Okay. Um, uh, Miss Rez, um, I think I had you next then. Okay. So um, I think two questions. One is. I, I truly appreciate this is a truly interesting, amazing mixed development. I mean, we, we got everything here. Uh, so my question in regards to the community input, which is very important to me, is have the aldermen and community groups uh, from the area seen the most recent uh, you know, variation of this plan? Um, I, I would like to know if, if that has been the case, if this uh, has been discussed now, you know, so the community can see where this is going. So um, that, is, that is the next step. We, we talked about it with the alderman. The alderman is aware of, you know, uh, the design changes. We try to keep the alderman, um, you know, up to date and posted. Uh, but uh, what we didn't want, or what I didn't want to do, I'll, I'm not going to put it on anybody else, is I, I didn't want to go out and say, you know, this is what we're going to be presenting to um, DPD. We really wanted to get through this phase first and see exactly if there were, you know, more recommendations, uh, any modifications. And then at that point in time, when we felt that we had something that, you um, was close to a final stage, then we could go out into the community and present it. But let me, let me just say this, that the community has been very patient with me. I mean, they've been supportive of this project for 10 years. Most people would have given up on this project. Actually, some people have given up on the project. Um, and so, you know, we've been to community leaders, community groups, held meetings in, you know, schools and, uh, restaurants and we and everybody comes and that's great uh, but we wanted to make sure that if we were going to do this one more time it was going to be a presentation that says okay 
you know, the city has, you know, signed off on it. The committee has signed off on it. You know, um, tell me what you think. Otherwise, we'd never get this thing done. We just keep going back and forth. And, and quite honestly, I'm, you know, I'm 10 years older than I was before. And, you know, I'm, I'm getting close to 70. I, I keep telling everybody I'd really like to get this thing done before I die. I appreciate that response because I think that's exactly what needs to happen is that once these, you know, these plans have the blessing of everybody, go back to the community is critical because most of the time we don't do that. We don't go back. So I, I appreciate hearing that. And then since um, uh, housing is kind of my, my, my passion, uh, what is going to be the housing, the, 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 what you're projecting housing to be at? What is, what, what is, what the, the people that are going to be living there are going to be looking at? What is on the left uh, next to the service drive? So um, over in that area is, it's, it's actually a, a stacked building. So you have daycare, on the first level and then affordable housing. What makes that very tricky is, is the fact that we're, we're actually um, talking to two organizations that in the city of Chicago, that's special, actually nearby actually, uh, uh, both of them are in the, the community we serve, um, that actually specializes in affordable housing. It, it's not something that you know, Joe Caprilli or Tom or Mike DiLorenzo or myself are familiar with, we, we needed to go to the people that do this for a living. And, um, you know, it's a pretty complex process. Um, you know, it, even to the point where to have true affordable housing, um, you know, we, we've been told that we might have to create another partnership because of the fact that, uh, um, you know, Chicago Southwest Development Corp may not be able to do it uh, by itself, which, which is fine. So um, I would say that until we have a strong handle on um, a partnership or a, a process, uh, and again, with the community's input, because I've attended a lot of community meetings where the word affordable housing was used and it turned out to be something other than affordable housing. And mm -hmm. that's not the objective here. Uh, again, the objective is what the community asked for, and that was to provide, you know, quality, good housing that fits their needs at affordable prices. Um, that was really important to them, not Chicago prices, okay, affordable prices for the income levels in our community. I understand that, but my question is today, where this is currently being uh, the sign at, what are these, what are these apartments are going to be facing? What is to the left? What is their landscaping oh. that they're going to be looking at? Oh, they're, I see. Not, they're not yeah. going to be looking at the playground or the amphitheater, or maybe they are, but I, I want to be, it seems to me that it's kind of hiding, that the housing is kind of hiding in there. So that's what I'm trying to understand. What is the surrounding? Yeah, I think that uh, the, that came out in the original, the original, like when we had that uh, here, I can even get to let's see if I can get to that plan for you really quickly. You're going to talk about the plan that we had where the housing was up front. Yeah. Let me get this. Hold on just a second. This will be a little bit easier to. There we go. Um, originally, like in the in one of the, in the original input, the residential was along uh, 31st and Kedzie. Some of the comments that came back from uh, from uh, the community and others is that, that uh, they thought that that would be relatively loud and they were hoping that we might actually put it into a more garden spot, which is back on the backside here. Um, it does lift up. We did put the daycare on the first two floors so that it lifted up the units so they would look over the roofs to the west. And then of course the Eastern views would look onto the, the main green there on the plaza. I think right now that we had based on uh, Everything that we've talked about, I think right now we were only carrying something like 150 units at this time, but uh, most of them, the intention was a central, uh, um, a um, double loaded corridor looking with views to east or west. And then, you know, we would have, have corners, we would minimize the, the views out to the north and the south. Okay. Hey Tom, I think, can you actually go to the plan so you can actually see what the surrounding property is? I believe that's what um, oh, Rahul was talking about. Yeah. Yeah, so like literally, on. what is what is on the other side of the street? Yeah. Hold on, I'll get you. 
this is a better one for this, uh, right? So, so if you, this, uh, hopefully this one you can see here, it's like, it looks across over the Cinespace building to um, at least to the, to the, our west, to the east, it looks back into the site, to the north, it looks over to the, um, the El Paseo Trail and over to the, uh, the housing development there, the, the residential area. And then to the south there, that would be where the connector back to the parking, uh, parking for the housing is, uh, is located. Does that help? Does that give you a better idea of the yeah, thank context? You. Yeah. Great. I believe um, Tom I Dunahoo was next with it. Yeah, I had, uh, so Reed, I have, it's like Reed, Juan, uh, Brian Lee, and Bob I have so far, and then anybody else that's putting up their hand that I haven't been able to. Uh, oh, Leslie, I just, saw, I just saw yours too. So, okay, I got you on there. Reed, if you want to go ahead, then uh, I got you. Sure, thank you. Uh, I just have a couple of questions, and, and I too want to join the chorus, uh, the congratulatory chorus on um, how uh, how well you all have done to a, to to consider a number of these big troublesome issues here. Um, really, it's obvious that you're trying to do well, and that's not always the case, as we know. So. Congratulations on that. Um, I have a, a couple of things that I think are relatively simple. Um, this is this might be a good view to stay on. Um, okay. it, it, as I'm reading it correctly, the bulk of your residential area is to the north and west of the site. The east uh, is, if I'm getting my directions correct, um, is the city. The, the, the city. The east is that empty site there. Yeah. Okay. Yep, good. That's and the two years to your west. So. Um, the bulk of, of residential is to the north and west. And I'm wondering if maybe you had thought of where, I love your marketplace, and I think that's a fantastic idea that just sort of has success spelled all over it, um, written all over it, um, or at least success potential written all over it. Um, I'm wondering if it might be better or, uh, on the west side so that it's closer to the neighbors and they might actually walk to it. Um, it. It makes me wonder if the whole top end, maybe you could go to plan for just one more minute. Um, sorry to do that to you. No, go for it. Um, uh, so now you're looking, this is, plan is north up, so we're coming back. So housing is right here. This right. Uh, I'm wondering if you just flipped the the plan, everything north of the outpatient wing and the office wing that are kind of two thirds of the way up running east and west. If everything above them just kind of flipped to the other side, um, you would you would bring with you uh, maybe housing stays there, but you would bring with you the marketplace and um, part of the landscaping, or maybe I'm just talking about moving the marketplace to the other side, um, which would bring it into closer proximity to your residential neighborhood um, and maybe to the film studios as well, which uh, if I understand correctly is supposed to employ a hundred or more people um, that you might be able to pick up some benefit to your community that way. Um, yeah, I, the only reason that we I, we had considered that, I, the only thing I'd offer up onto you is that I, we needed to land bank some space for the possible future expansion of the hospital. And that's kind of one of the reasons why the drop off and everything were kind of placed there is that, that we wanted it to, it, it is currently slated as the opera. That's the one place that if the hospital actually had to expand, that was the direction it was planning to go. but. It, I'm not saying that we couldn't but, 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 something there. It's the same size. I mean, if you just drop your market on top of there, I mean, I don't know why the hospital couldn't expand to the east just as easily as it could expand to the west. Um, I mean, what? It, it's just a suggestion. It seems to me that 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 that's wanting to be on a different part of the site. Okay. Um, uh, but the idea is great. Um, and then along with that, um, and this is a this is a somewhat un finished thought. So um, bear with me as I say it. You made the decision to do a pinwheel plan with your building. Um, you talked about wanting to create a campus, right? Um, not you, everybody has talked about that. And, and there's 
There's great logic and, and one can understand that. But as soon as you do a pinwheel plan building, you don't make a campus, you make a quadrant plan. It's north, south, east and west corners. It's, de it's definitional by the building layout. That isn't inherently a bad decision. It's just a decision. Um, and once you've made that decision, I think you start to, you're starting to kind of correct for that. If, if, if you leave the market right there and you look at your houses, um, where your cafe and your plaza is amidst the office, you're trying very hard there to create campus and a, a three-sided figure. It's open to the east. At least it's got an architectural definition on the north, south and west sides, right? And, and that's campus-like. And what you've done on this that I think is quite elegant is make bridges, right? Or make these bridges you to transition from one quadrant, in this case, northeast, to northwest, simply by moving through it. But the building is going to help find that, right? This, the break between them. At the same time, then, I think it, it's almost incumbent upon you to help define the remaining spaces more clearly in a campus-like way which you kind of do with housing, outpatient, and hospital on, on your current west side, with a three-sided figure open to the north, right? So you're working with those three-sided figures two times, and I think with, with some measure of success, I think you could actually even turn the corner again a little bit and make them almost four-sided, not entirely, um, but you could give them a little, a little piece of that. But then if you look at your southeast corner and your southwest corner, which I know is the garage, but you look at the southeast corner, it just bleeds. It's, it's just open and there's, there's no sense that there's an edge to it. And even when you showed your future expansion where you're going to be the monster that ate the site on the east side, which I think is a great idea. Um, but when you showed that, you very carefully tried to close up your three-sided figures there, right? Um, and so I know the right intention because I'm watching you do it. Even when you're at your most preliminary um, aspects. But of course, um, we may not all live long enough to see that happen. So I think that uh, you owe it to yourself to address that southeast corner um, with some of that same kind of vigor um, that you've shown in these other areas, because you're making very good preliminary decisions on this. And I think you want to you want to support your own your own diagram even even more than you're doing now. But I do strongly, strongly, strongly advise you to reconsider the location of that plaza, of, excuse me, of that, um, of that market space, which would do what I'm asking you to do, by the way. It would give you your four-sided figure uh, on that northwest corner, um, which is the one that's most likely to get pedestrian-driven access to it. Thank you very much. No, thank you. Um, I guess... Uh... If Reed, that's Reed, uh, Juan, if you, if you wanted to, you're, you're next on the list here, I had. Super, Tom. And again, as, as with the others, uh, kudos to all of you for, for just getting to the point, you know, 10 years later, it's, it's amazing that you're presenting the Committee on Design for such an important project for the community. But I also think, you know, the fact that you have so many unique typologies that are all interconnected to wellness. And I think sometimes that's forgotten. You just, there aren't too many examples like this that you'll find anywhere and it's complex. And so, you know, just the nature of moving these puzzle pieces around is, uh, is not as easy as can be suggested. So just know that, you know, certainly from my perspective, I get that. I just um, wanted to offer up just some general thoughts. One, you know, uh, I think, to follow up on the conversation about the housing without suggesting where, because admittedly, you know, there's, there's so much history here and, and, you know, hearing you talk about some of the community meetings, but I, what I will say, just, you know, knowing these communities so well, when you start to elevate housing and have third, fourth, fifth floor housing, um, the residents from these neighborhoods have rarely ever been given a chance to see our city. And um, it really starts to make our communities feel very visually connected to the city. Or as I like to tell people, there's oftentimes I meet with, you know, neighborhoods, particularly in the Latino community, just like Little Village. 
and they won't even think they're a part of Chicago. But I always feel like architecture has a chance to connect visually. So even in locating the residential block to have a visual connection, not just to the landscape that you suggested, Tom, that's local, but more of a global view of our city is wonderful. Right now where it's located, you know, the, the hospital tower will block the view from the residential to the Northeast. So just to have that as a consideration, I think would be interesting. Um, this is just also kind of your, your row chart test reaction. When, when I saw the central utility plant and I saw kids and housing right next to it, I almost felt like they were put into the land of misfit toys, if you will. And it's just something just didn't feel right, right, wrong or indifferent. It's just that, you know, putting kids next to the central utility plant in the housing just felt counterintuitive. Again, I don't know enough about the critical pieces that you guys do, but I just wanted to offer that up for consideration. And then lastly, just as a, a fan of, of soccer, soccer fields in east-west direction are very challenging. If you could look at rotating them in a north-south, um, anybody that has ever played goalie would appreciate not having the sun in their eyes. So that's it. <laughs> Thank you. And congrats again. No, I, I, I appreciate that as a, a player myself. So <laughs> I understood. Definitely. Um, you I'm know, Ross with regards to the central plant, it, it's, it's interesting because actually uh, your point is very valid. We, we, we wrestled with that quite a bit. One of the issues that we're going to be, uh, providing is underground tunnels to make deliveries. So whether it be, you know, to the hospital or to any other, uh, you know, buildings, whether it be, you know, uh, freestanding, we, we did not want a situation where there was a lot of delivery traffic. We, we just didn't see that as, I just don't, I don't like delivery traffic. I mean, I, I think it becomes busy um, you know, we could have a nice conversation someday about the hospital because, you know, uh, the hospital is not going to look like a traditional hospital. I, I, I don't like traffic in hallways or, you know, whether it be food or supplies or, you know, and the same thing here. So that point there seemed to be the point in which we could um, move tunnels, whether it be to the hospital, to the retail obviously then to the, uh, initially the tunnel was gonna go all the way across to the affordable housing on Kedzie. You know, now, now it's gonna be um, mm -hmm. next door, but you know, you, you bring up a point that quite honestly, uh, I have to tell you, there are a lot of hours of wrestling with it. And uh, if, if we could find another place to relocate it, boy, I think we'd all be happy with it because we, I, we agree with you. Yeah, you know, the problem is, is that we're, you know, we're limited on, on space. That's the biggest, that's the biggest hurdle that we have, you know, uh, be, because what, what I, I don't want to do is I don't want to take away uh, programs, you know, from the community. And, and I need leases to make the thing viable so I can't even eliminate retail. You know, it, because I got to pay for it. Uh, so it becomes a, a big puzzle. And if I told you that over the 10 year period, I was told by many people, okay, that I didn't need this much property, that I was being too greedy and uh, I should give more property away. You know, um, I, this is a good example on how, you know, I wish we had more property. Uh, I think if it was on there, I think Brian, uh, Brian, I think you were up next as, uh, as I was, I've been marking them. Yep. <clears throat> okay. Uh, can you guys hear me? Yeah. Good. Uh, so maybe a few comments and, and maybe a couple of suggestions. And I know there's lots of people who also probably have similar thoughts, but also there may be some contrarian thoughts that we can talk about. Um, you know, I think that the program and the project appear to be, you know, really a wonderful catalytic investment in the neighborhood. And really, uh, you folks should be commended for a very thoughtful mix of programs and features and, and um, you know, response to the community that would contribute to the overall health and quality of life for the neighborhood. 
Um, you know, the, the neighborhood, I drove out there to look at it. You know, it was obviously uh, lots of industrial vacant lots, uh, low density, but it is next to the very vibrant little village neighborhood. So how do you connect them together uh, and, and really make it a part of that neighborhood? And understandably, you know, right now, you know, there's nothing there. So I think that it's a little bit of a suburban development pattern that you've um, uh, approach uh, maybe as a campus, but also I think with the surface parking, you know, at the perimeter, um, you know, it's it's a uh, you know it's kind of a uh, a usual way to approach it that you know let people see where they're going to park and let them walk up to the door. But I think that this I think Ronald mentioned the super block concept or the kind of uh, shopping mall concept. I don't think it's really ne necessarily pedestrian oriented. It's certainly not inviting. I think to the surrounding community unless you drive to it. Uh, scale of spaces and the continuity, I think, are important. And I think that, um, Guy, you even mentioned it, that, you know, you wanted to create a campus, which tend to be enclaves. You know, they're protected. You can control who goes in and out uh, versus really a part of the city. So this is kind of a fundamental question about how much of an open extension uh, to the community are you trying to, to do, or are you trying to balance security, safety and exclusion and with all the things you probably heard from the community, which is about outreach, retail, lots of different programs, mixed use. Uh, I think the project mission, and I think St. Anthony's mission, especially with their, their whole idea of, of health and wellness is really the latter. And so I, I think that this comes down to several uh, kind of key issues. One is that the, the streets lead into the site, but they all terminate in the garage and I counted five right and left turns to get through the site. You know, it's confusing. It doesn't promote an easy flow of traffic in and out of the site. And you probably know as healthcare, uh, wayfinding and orientation and just clarity is really the most important when you think about the site plan. Uh, the three distinct spaces that you see on the site plan, uh, the two public spaces on the east and west of the kind of, kind of uh, you know, wonderful floating bar uh, and then the south open space really is that big parking parking space. Um, I think that that big parking space is problematic. And I know that the planning department has mentioned this, right? It's very suburban. It's a barrier to pedestrian traffic. You know, you know you're walking up uh, or getting dropped off or coming from the east. Uh, you can't really even see the retail. So I know that market consultants would say, well, you need surface parking out in front of there, but it's a big, vast parking lot that's too wide. And I don't think you even will see the retail, uh, especially if you don't build the third phase of the freestanding pavilions. It's a long ways to that, you know, that retail. So I think that that retail will suffer. Um, I think the two other open spaces, uh, notwithstanding uh, Hannah's comment, which always makes fun of architects, is that uh, they actually could be, you know, very uh, interesting and um, obviously should be developed more. But I think that you guys have a bead on how to make that uh, those open space really be useful and not just green patches, but um, something that's highly programmed. Uh, I kind of like the corner market and canopy feature. You know, uh, you could quibble about the architectural uh, qualities of it. How high is it? You know, what's it made of? But obviously that's too early. Uh, I worry a little bit about the double loaded condition that you guys mentioned of the retail, uh, because you know that kind of quote unquote pedestrian retail path seems to be redundant and parallel to the road and the retail path right next to it. And then how do you deal with the entrances into those, those shops, stores, you know, um, quick food bites? Uh, how do you deal with the service entrances or the back door? So there's gonna be a back to some of those things. And right now it seems that it's kind of a little bit of a redundant and kind of a, a feature you incorporate in there uh, just to talk about pedestrians. Uh, I think I agree with some people that the Paseo Trail Loop is circuitous, you know, again, it's that five turns. So, uh, I think though that if you thought about that connecting that trail, which seems like a great idea, remember that you're probably the only property if you incorporate that that's privately owned. So you can really make that a controlled experience and really uh, capitalize it. Uh, playing fields on top of the garage is a nice touch. Uh, I think the portos could be you know, pretty fantastic. And so even those things suggest that you're inviting the public in deep into the site. Uh, and so I think that that you know, there's things to be done with the circulation. Uh, for healthcare projects, I think, as I mentioned, you know, one of the most important things in our experience is uh, clear wayfinding and orientation. 
and applies to not only drop-offs and parking, building entrances and internal planning, but to the site itself. And I think that it is not real clear how this project works right now, even you know, trying to study a little bit more. Uh, you have the hospital, the outpatient, uh, and then inpatient, I mean, excuse, inpatient, and then the outpatient, and then the hospitality wing, surgery, surgery center is way down to the other south part of the site. So, um, you know, maybe later on you could explain better how that works because it's really spread out. And then, you know, what's the relationship of that to some of the vocational and entrepreneurial incubator spaces? I think the housing, hopefully it's uh, affordable, along with food choices, grocery store, you know, those are, those are all great programs and ideas that when people are designing healthcare facilities today, they really do think about those things. So if you can make those things work, uh, because it, uh, it's gonna be fantastic, because not only does it benefit the community, but also staff, doctors, visitors, families that come. So, you know, in a sense, you really are creating a very much a place of health and wellness as a theme, but really a, a, a new neighborhood. Uh, I think that orientation of housing is a little bit problematic, you know, east, west, and there seems to be a lot of site available and it seems that north, south can be better orientation. And I don't know about views. Um, phasing suggests that there's large building pads that are gonna be vacant or in the construction, you know, in those public spaces and front doors of the hospital programs uh, while you're in operation. So, you know, that might be um, a consideration. So just a few suggestions. Um, you know, I think that, that um, the partnership with the city of being able to own and control a large piece of land like this, uh, think of it as less of a big mall-like parcel, which, you know, have their own problems today and people are redesigning them. Think about you controlling and coordinating a series of city blocks, right? And what happens is it's much more inviting, it's much less risk because, you know, you can basically have more control of it. They're more flexible and adaptable. And then, frankly, I think they're likely to be more future-proofed because you have access, you have more addressing, and you have the ability to change things out, you know, of the pieces rather than in a campus-like setting where everything's carefully composed. I think if you make the project a, a part of this vibrant little village neighborhood by extending the city's movement patterns into the site, I think it would really be a big improvement. It'd be clear and understandable. And I think that that grid would be um, probably the first way to start. Um, I think that open space could be a little bit, have more impact. It was a little more centralized and, and more interconnected. I know that there's kind of a nice, interesting story about it right now, but I think it's, you know, it's a little bit confusing to me. So I agree with the planning department's suggestion. Uh, one of them about uh, the garage could shift to the east. Uh, I think you could allow some surface parking on Kedzie uh, to kind of entice people in for a quick uh, come in and out. I don't think it has to be right up against the street. But I think that um, what that does, that does sort of activate the entire stretch of Kedzie, which, as you know, is kind of the main identifier for the, for the project, one of the main identifiers. I think you could also turn the garage 90 degrees and shift it to the east, you know, allowing some surface parking strips on the east and the north. They could be integrated with open spaces. Again, you know, I think that parking, if carefully, carefully done, uh, it's landscape, you know, if you plant a tree every, every third space and, you know, you make it part of the kind of system of experience of, of being outside. Uh, and then I asked, I wanted to ask the team whether or not they studied the garage as more of a linear structure uh, on the west side, you know, may, maybe extending uh, towards uh, 31st Street, uh, still allowing that land bank, which I understand for hospital expansion, um, and then maybe it steps out as it moves south. Uh, so maybe that 30, you know, not, maybe Spalding doesn't have to always run north-south. Maybe it actually bends out towards and on a diagonal to 32nd. Uh, so that, you know, you can still get your bulkier parking in and the right kind of parking bays and still get north-south orientation for soccer fields and that type of thing. But it, it might free up the site a little bit. Uh, simplify the, the circulation. And then uh, importantly, maybe it could take um, a system of spaces, both internal and external, and connect them more, more towards the south 
uh, at Kedzi and towards the, the open space and the, um, and the Paseo Trail, because that is kind of a mentee. And there's a, there's a way that you could add to your story of connecting Little Village towards the canal. Uh, that would be a big plus. Uh, I would utilize the standalone retail pavilions to activate the edges of, and the open spaces. And again, just consider the back doors and service entrances. And then, um, you know, and then take advantage of the fact that you could bring people in in a, a really um, big way into Paseo Trail. Uh, that's understandable. Uh, celebrates focal point as a destination, you know, of health and wellness, lots of activity. Uh, and the project then links, as I said, the Greenbelt Canal uh, to the neighborhoods. So that's kind of some of the thoughts. Thank you, Brian. I appreciate it. Um, uh, Bob, I think we had Bob, I think we have you on is your our next one here. And then uh, Leslie, and I think we've got John uh, there. And I think if I've missed anybody, Ann, I think we're rotated back to you then. Okay. Cool. Well, um, thank you. And thank you for um, a really great presentation. It really helped us understand what we were looking at. I think it's a massive project with um, great impact. And I'm super excited about it. Um, given that I'm not an architect in this field of faces that I'm looking at, I'm looking at it a little bit differently. Um, I am an artist and a, a designer. And so I'm very interested in those portal spaces that you, that you described in the presentation. And they're super exciting. And I love the scale of them and what their um, potential is. And uh, I think we all can recognize the great potential there. Um, my only real comment is I'd love to understand the strategy you're going to use to implement whatever goes there. Because to me, that's like the most sensitive bit in this space because it has to be so connected to the architecture and the vision to be part of this project but even more so it needs to steep itself into the neighborhood because as a campus project I'm going to use that same um, word that Brian was concerned about as well I do think of a campus as being an enclosure and a specific place as opposed to or for somebody, as opposed to open until you know what it's for. And so I think that the portals are the entree into this kind of space and they could really, really work for you um, or really work against you. And so I just really wanna understand how you're gonna go about it. Cause I don't think it, I don't think it can be too top down at all. I think it has to be very, very widespread and very thoughtful to who's going to be walking in there and who you want walking into that campus, which is your neighbors. I think that I, I would almost come right back at you, Bob, is that that's one of those moments where uh, a bit of learning from, from you and how we might be able to do that. Because it, it is one where they've been identified, but I don't think the process of how that would go about is, is still completely under consideration. And that's um, like you said, exactly how we're going to structure that. I don't think any of that's been determined at this point. It's simply the fact that we wanted in the master plan to understand that we would early be early, uh, take um, an opportunity to really engage early on so that it's not simply pasting a graphic or something on at the end so that you have the opportunity to, to work with the materials and that type there. I, so I don't know if I really have the, I don't know if I can answer your question at this point about exactly how it's going to be done. I almost offered up as the fact that I would love your, uh, I would love some input on how we go about that and accomplish some of the uh, some of the op opportunities that you just spoke about. I'm happy to at any point, um, but thank you. I appreciate the fact that it's not just a application that needs to happen. It's actually part of the culture that you're building. Yeah. And then. Um, do you have anything else, Bob? Or is it, oh, okay. Uh, Leslie, I think I had you down next on the, on the list. Hello. Awesome. Thanks, Tom. Um, thank you for the presentation. This, uh, just to echo what other reviewers have said, this is a really exciting project and applaud the efforts to tackle such a complex design problem. Um, it definitely appears that you've spent quite a bit of time really thinking through the different programmatic elements and their organization on the site. 
Um, so I, I don't want to repeat what some of my colleagues have said. Brian's comments particularly resonated with me, but I would like to bring up a couple additional um, opportunities I'm seeing as I look at the site plan. Um, we talked a lot about the campus and I heard the team, the design team talk quite a bit about public outreach and the, how important it is to respond to community need. So in the spirit of responding to community need, um, having calling something a campus agree with my colleagues is that it does uh, it does have connotations of being relatively inwardly looking and um, part of I think what you've talked about quite a bit is that this is a space for community and so um, I would urge the team to think about place making elements that bring community in um, and help them understand kind of where they are and how this can be an outwardly facing amenity that adds to the little village community, as opposed to those who could be perceived as being a part of the development, as opposed to um, making them feel apart from the development. I think that the sense of discovery um, when used uh, sparingly is a great idea. And many of these spaces, as Brian pointed out, how many turns you have to take to actually get to the different particular specific destinations on the site can be disorienting. So while there, it could be exciting to create these spaces of discovery, particularly for those who are on the site frequently, for those that are new to the site, I think that it would be, um, it would uh, elevate the success of this design to make sure that wayfinding and orientation are clear um, to those who are just visiting for the first time and that publicly facing spaces or those spaces that you want the public to actually use um, are right up front. Uh, there have been suggestions of connecting to the existing city grid. I think this is an excellent idea. Um, I also think it's an excellent idea to blur the lines between where cars go and where people go. This will solve a it will resolve a few different things. One is the speed of traffic on the site. Um, a num and uh, talking about traffic calming here. So while a number of turning movements also slow down traffic, having clear wayfinding and clear paths through the site. Um, should be a priority. And then using other alternative uh, traffic calming methods such as um, one earths or um, shared road uh, ideas, maybe um, an elevated crosswalks, maybe another I, other place making ideas or other traffic calming strategies that you may wanna consider um, if you do uh, take the advice of um, attempting to connect into the city grid a little bit more. Um, the pinwheel concept, um, is interesting. However, it does create a set of quadrants. So in thinking about how to connect the site and how to create one place instead of four places, maybe something that you want to think about. Um, it means that the backside of the site, which is along the service drive, actually um, has less of a not only less of a prominence on main um, through roads, but also appears in the site plan as an afterthought. And I would just caution that affordable housing in the back corner of the site um, next to potentially where the hospital will expand um, may be um, not the most successful site planning decision. Um, I do appreciate you explaining, the design team explaining the phasing of this project. I think that that's critical to understanding the party and also where priority placemaking elements should be um, in phase one first. And you know, secondly, in phase two, because these two phases are going to be, you know, the, the ones that the public, you know, will either come pat you on the back for or may give you a frowny face in their final review. So thinking about where housing and its direct amenities, if that's daycare, if that's the amphitheater, um, looking at the site plan adjacencies now, um, and then thinking about where St. Anthony's wants to expand, I believe it's to the west close to the drop off, it means that housing will be accessed through a service drive and not a main drive. So this is, again, setting up affordable housing through a back door. Um, and I, I would ask to, you know, ask you to take a little bit uh, closer look at that, as well as the entirety of the um, roadway hierarchy um, and access to specific destinations for those that will be using the site on a regular basis. Um, I also noticed that in this pinwheel design in the northeast corner, Plaza Cafe are on Kedzie, public facing, which is quite far away from 
um, the housing, which is where if you have a captive audience and you're creating a sort of a 24 hour district because people will actually be living on the site that you may want to consider buffers to you know, some of the activities. So what is the, what are the hours of operation? What are the hours of use of the different um, uses on the site? And then how can each one of those uses you know, work together? So for example, if the playground and amphitheater are near housing, it seems like it would be a residential amenity. However, what are the hours of those uses, the amount of noise, you know, thinking about where ambulance comes in, um, thinking about bright lights from the soccer and baseball field, you know, just kind of being a, a, a little bit sensitive to where those buffers actually need to happen and how they may not always want to happen with another building. They could happen with green space or they could happen with the street grid as it moves to the site. Um, I also uh, wondered about uh, just a resource that the design team um, may be aware of, but I offer the um, health and race equity impact assessment through the City of Chicago uh, Health 2025 that may be a good resource for the design team. Um, I heard you say equity and I heard you say community participation and public engagement. So again, making sure that this development actually is equitable and particularly because it is a health and wellness development, ensuring that health and race equity is considered in the design of this development and that you are providing um, adequate amenity um, in a way and in, in actually celebrating the, the opportunity that, you know, this amazing opportunity you've been given um, to create a super special place um, in Little Village. So uh, great job to the team. Um, and uh, uh, hopefully those comments help. Thanks, Leslie. I appreciate it. Um, uh, John, I think we're, I think we're down to you now. Uh, and it's coming around the corner there as well. So go ahead, John. I just wanted to, uh, sorry, um, just a time check. It is uh, exactly one hour since we started the discussion. Um, so just wanted to kind of let you know. So maybe like 10, 15 more minutes or so. Thank you. Yeah, okay, I'll, I'll be brief. Uh, a lot of my comments have already been made. Um, I I'd start by commending the design team and the project team on their perseverance. And um, it's, it's uh, a noble effort and uh, I, I wish you all the best. Um, but my first comment is about the presentation. The second comment is about the plan. The presentation, um, your, your presentation uh, told us, it answered the questions what and where, but it did not answer the question why. And when the audience is, is architects, um, I think we wanna know why the scheme is arranged the way it is. And what was the design concept? And I may have missed it, but um, what, what we're looking for is like the organizational idea. What is the driving idea that led you to design this in this way? And, and I didn't hear that. And, and so I'm, I was kind of struggling to look for a logic in the screen, scheme as a result of that. And I think it's all the more important on a very long project because sometimes you lose track of where you started and where you are. So you continually, uh, I always try to start out my presentations with, with you know, the why and uh, the concept and how we got to that concept. And so I think that some of the comments you're getting are, are the result of a lack of framing uh, of the original presentation. And I, uh, I share a lot of Brian's reservations about the way it was designed. I, I feel uh, <clears throat> that this looks less like a campus to me and more like a suburban office park. And uh, it feels like it was designed for cars and not for people. And um, I was like, well, what can we, you know, what can we do about that without, uh, you know, re redesigning the whole thing? <clears throat> and I think one of the uh, keys to me that could be improved at this point um, is, is the spaces, uh, the green spaces of the plant, which feel to me residual. It feels like if I had to guess, the way this was designed is the buildings were placed first, or perhaps the parking, and then uh, the parking, the buildings preceded the green space, and the green space kind of got filled in. And a, a way, if you if you did uh, go back to the drawing board to any degree to this project, I think what I would suggest is um, a, a scheme where the spaces are more primary 
in the buildings in, in the roads are maybe more secondary as a way of organizing uh, the scheme around the green spaces. So the green spaces and open spaces might have labels um, and themes and concepts and the buildings are more fungible. It doesn't so much matter maybe where, which one's the office or which one's the surgery wing or whatever, since all the bars seem to be a similar dimension. Um, I agree with a lot of comments that have been made. I'm not gonna repeat them. I also feel like the housing is in the wrong place. It feels like it should be, uh, housing should be along 31st Street with retail at the base. I think um, the, the, the North, West and Southwest quadrant, quadrants to me are very problematic. The Southwest feels like a suburban mall parking lot. Um, the, uh, I'm not sure why the Northwest is, um, that's your one link to the to the residential community that you acknowledge, but to, to put um, you know a drop off there, a, a vehicular drop off there seems to be a missed opportunity. And I'd like to see more holding of the street edges along 31st Street in Kedzie. And I'm wondering if the parking that is currently located on the southeast quadrant could that be placed along the southern border of the site, uh, which borders infrastructure and is is, is less. Uh, urbanistically sensitive, uh, let's say. And I, I wonder, and there's probably a reason for this. I, I never designed a hospital. But why is the hospital so prominently placed at the corner of 31st Street and Kedzie? Is there like a lot of walk-in business for a hospital or is it something about, uh, you know, could that be, I realize the ambulance needs to have access, but it seems like the ambulance access could be along the Western edge. And I don't know why the hospital uh, has to be so so prominently located, um, but perhaps there's a very good reason for that, um, <clears throat> and that's uh, that's my comments. Uh, John, then I think uh, let me see, I, Anne. I think you had your hand up as well, so that... I did. I'll I'll be very brief because I think. Um a lot of, of my specific comments have been addressed by other reviewers. Um, but as the last person maybe to comment, what I would say is it, it does seem in the thread of, of comments that you've received over the course of the last hour or so, much of those comments, I think, uh, can be distilled in a desire for us to see uh, more emphasis placed on the design of the open space uh, in concert with the built environment here. Um, the open space, both as an organizing element to the site as a way to, and as a way to draw people into the site. But I think also to help talk about what the quality of this place is, um, because I think that you have a very complex program and there's been a lot of thought into how that program can be distributed across the site, but we see less about what the spirit of these spaces are. And I think that that will be really important to the success of the overall development. Um, I also would, would urge you to look at uh, opportunities to connect to the street grid. And I know that that forces you to take area away from the site, but frankly, I think it also might be very helpful to helping understand how these spaces are serviced and accessed um, over the lifespan of the project. Um, and then last, I just wanted to, to um, revisit this issue of phasing because I think it, you know, projects like this, I know they are very complex and, and you've spent 10 years already just planning it and you will likely spend a considerable amount of time executing on the, over the course of the whole site. And I think it's really important to understand when you execute phase one, especially with this pinwheel concept, you end up with open spaces at the Northwest corner and the Southeast corner. And what that is during the course of that phase, because that could be five or six years, I think it's so important to understand. And I'd urge you to look at this as a project over time, as well as a final solution. Um, but again, in closing, my biggest comment would be to really look at this open space one more time as a central part of, of this development, um, because it will, it will control, I think, to a large degree, the success of what happens here.
Uh, if that's if that was our last one, uh, Josh, I think we're if there's any other final ones, I think we can we're close to that's everybody I have down on the list at least. Yeah, no, um, thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, Tom and your team uh, for giving us this uh, presentation. Um, if there are no other comments, I would probably ask at this time for the Committee uh, on Design members, if you could message me your recommendations or comments while they're still fresh in your mind, or feel free to email me just so I can compile them um, and you know put them all together, uh, just to make sure that they're accurate and concise, because um, there's a lot of talking, which has been great. Um, so before we adjourn, uh, on behalf of DPD, uh, thank you again for all of your critical thinking and thoughtful comments on these important projects. Um, the meeting will now move into a private session to allow committee members to further advise the commissioner and his staff. We will now take a 10 minute recess uh, and reconvene at 3.15. Members of the public and development teams, please depart the Zoom meeting by that time. Thank you for attending and sharing your thoughts. We hope you will all come back soon. Thanks everybody. We appreciate your time today. Thanks for the good presentation. Thank you, Tom. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.